Hello and welcome everyone to Jewel TV and Talk -a Latte. I'm Julia Kelleher broadcasting to you live from Bend, Oregon here in our temporary uh, studio space. Today's topic is all about maternity lighting and for a very good reason. The maternity retreat brought to you by the Milky Way is coming up in May and I am so excited and honestly very thrilled to be a part of it uh, and we'll be teaching a course in marketing at maternity at the retreat. So I'll tell you more about that coming up, but in the meantime, all of us who want to do newborns and babies, well, we need to have mommies coming through the door. And what better way to get those newborns than to first start off with the maternity session. Now, I don't do a ton of maternity because a lot of moms call me after the baby is already born, but let me tell you, getting the client in the beginning when they are you know, in those seven, eight month stages of pregnancy is such a valuable time because you can build that relationship with the mama and photograph her in a stage of her life that she'll never be in again. And then of course, when that happens and the baby's born, Mm, we get that little baby in our arms to work with. So today we're going to talk about simple maternity lighting. And you guys all know my assistant, Belinda DeBoard. She, bless her heart, agreed to be pregnant for this. <laughs> and so we had some fun and ordered a fake belly and literally made her pregnant. So you'll see how we did that along with some bloopers at the end. But in the meantime, let's get started here with uh, sharing my screen and I'll go through a few keynotes. We'll talk about how to get the archives at Jewel TV. We have a fun freebie today as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that. And that will of course get us rolling into the video that we shared for you uh, about maternity. So. With that being said, today's episode is Simple Maternity Lighting, of course, brought to you uh, as Talk Latte episode number 28, and it's a Dual TV production. I wanna thank Beth Brinston, of course, for her videography skills and editing skills to help us put this episode together. She is learning just along with the rest of us on all this live broadcasting stuff, and she just did a tremendous job. So for those of you who are watching, please give a shout out to her, because she's worked really hard on this episode, and I'm very proud of her. So if you want to see the archives if you're tuning into this when it's being replayed on YouTube you can get the freebie and or see the archives of all past episodes by opting in for free at jewel-tv.com you'll see a form that looks like this put in your first name your last name your email address and that will give you access from here on out to all episodes of Jewel TV as well as the freebies that come along with them so Simple maternity lighting is all about what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna discuss basic setup and posing. One of the things we, re or I reiterate in this episode is that one light really is enough. Now, can you work with two? Of course you can. And there's times, as a matter of fact, I'm working with three in this episode. But the point I wanna stress and get across to you is that it's, it's critical to just keep things simple, especially when you're starting out in maternity. It's your brain tends to wanna to force a challenge on you because you want mom to look good, but you also want that, the belly to look good too because the belly is the whole point, right? But it is about mama's glow and her belly, but don't let that intimidate you. You don't necessarily need two lights, one on mama's face and one on the belly. And while I do show you that in this episode, you'll see that just by using a simple main light, you can create gorgeous portraits of mama and her belly with that beautiful new mama glow simply by using one light. Now, in this episode, I do use two background lights to evenly light my seamless paper. And one of the reasons I do that is to avoid banding so that everything's nice and evenly lit, lit and we don't get that digital artifacting when things are uh, said and done in the post-processing part. And that is the second part of this lesson, post-processing. I'm gonna take you through a little mini lesson on how I do basic post-processing for clients on maternity images. But the biggest key to take home is to get it right in camera. Don't over-process that skin. It's so easy to accidentally make mom kind of look a little plasticky because you're using too much skin softening, too much portraiture, something like that. Liquify is going to be your best friend. <laughs> I love liquify. If liquify went away, I'd be really sad. <laughs> you could pry it from my cold, dead hands, right? I don't over liquify moms. But on the other hand, she's coming to me, a professional photographer, to get professional images. So in my mind, that means she wants to look her best. So it's important for me as a professional with the vision to be able to see what can get tucked, what can get nipped, 
without making mama look like something she is not, okay? Every mama who comes into your studio, now I know I'm using the word every and that's kind of a overarching statement. Most moms who come into your studio are heavier than they normally are at this time. They've got a big belly, they're kind of swelling up, things don't feel right. I mean, if you ever had a baby, you totally know what this feels like. You just aren't, being photographed is usually one of the last things you wanna do, but you know you need to do it. So a little nip and tuck using liquify here and there is a great way to make mama feel like she normally is, but still highlight that belly. Keep your files in the same bit depth. I'll talk about this in the post-processing lesson. And keep your files in the same color space. That's gonna be critical to helping to reduce banding and create the highest quality file possible. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my video here and let you guys go ahead and watch this simple lesson on beautiful maternity lighting. And kudos to Belinda for, bless her heart, willing to be pregnant for the sake of education. Enjoy, everyone. We made Belinda pregnant. This is basically a silicone gel belly that you can buy off Amazon, believe it or not. We did a search and yeah, you could actually buy one off Amazon and look nine months pregnant. So we, Belinda being the good sport that she is, there's no baby in there, <laughs> decided to let me uh, demonstrate a little bit of maternity lighting for you here in our studio setup today. So she's technically not pregnant, but we're gonna pretend, sound good? So I wanted to um, just do a basic lighting setup for you guys uh, with maternity, and especially because the maternity retreat is coming up, which I'm really proud to be a part of and be teaching, an online retreat done by the Milky Way. Um, so we'll have more information about that later on in the broadcast. But in the meantime, B, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Prego. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just pose her the way I would if she was one of my mommies coming in for a photo shoot. Um, I'm gonna put a fan on her at some point. I'm going to um, just play around with her and just do simple lighting effects. What I have right now is a Profoto D1 Air Light with a seven foot Profoto Octobank um, up here kind of mimicking a northern light sky, okay? Then my background lights are again two Profoto D1 Airs. They're 500 watts each. All my lights are 500 watts. And they have two 24 inch umbrellas on them and inside the umbrella is just white. So it's not silver, it's not gold, it's just a simple white, uh, white filled umbrella for lack of a better word, or white backed umbrella. So I have these pointed towards my background. They are on extremely low power and the main light is right around F8, F8 or F9 or so. So the stop ratio difference is very broad and so even though we're shooting on white, we're actually gonna get gray images off of this because I'm not lighting my background very much, okay? So I'm gonna just let B kind of, be prego here. <laughs> it's a weird feeling, isn't it? <laughs> it actually feels real. <laughs> Look, I really do feel pregnant. <laughs> okay, so first things first, I want you to um, just kind of put all your weight on that right foot for me and kind of bring the left foot in so we're kind of creating that pretty S curve. Now bring the foot back towards the heel a bit more. Perfect, good girl. And then I just want you to put your hands under your belly, both under your belly, perfect, just a simple, clean shot. And then I'm going to fuss with things here and fuss with your hair. And then I'll fuss with your um, shoulders too once we get there, sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I want you to do, sweetheart, is turn your nose just a little bit towards the light. Too much, too much, small movements, small movements. There we go, and then chin forward and down. Perfect, and I just want you to close your eyes and kind of glance down at your belly, perfect. Good girl, perfect, take my shot. See how that looks, and that's beautiful. Okay, kind of relax your grip so your dress on the bottom is, is uh, yeah, it's bunching up. That's beautiful, that's exactly what I wanted. I want just a little bit more. I've got a little bunch here in the front. Let me see if I can fix it. Just so go ahead and grab your belly real softly. I'm just trying to get the fabric even right here. We've got like some crunching going on. There we go. Okay, now shove your hips that direction. Good girl, awesome. Beautiful, and then just put your chin towards me just a touch and forward and down. Perfect, not too much, just a little bit. Good girl, and close your eyes for me. Good job. Beautiful, see how I like that. Gorgeous, okay now just nose towards the light, a half an inch. 
Perfect, good girl. And then chin down just a touch as if you're looking. Get my focus points going here. Beautiful little sweet smile. You got a baby coming. <gasps> yes, you do, you got a baby coming. Get a nice low angle. Yeah, right, she's got a baby coming. She's like, heck no. <laughs> Perfect, good job. Awesome, just a lovely. Okay, now I want you to take your uh, right hand and put it up over the top of your belly. Right, other right, there you go, perfect. Good girl, and then go ahead and turn your body slightly towards me. Beautiful, good girl, right there, don't move. Beautiful, I love it. And go ahead and shove your lips, hips a little bit towards the background, good girl. Awesome, gorgeous, and now go ahead and look down and smile at your sweet belly. So, what are you gonna name it? <laughs> What are you gonna name it, girlfriend? <laughs> She's like, don't you dare do that to me, Julia. I'm not gonna name it. <laughs> okay, chin up just a touch for me. Chin up to just even more. I'm trying to get her face in the light because when she puts her chin too far down, then we get this, um, her, her face goes in shadow. Now, don't stick the chin out too far. Just bring it in a little bit. Good girl, good girl, awesome. A Little bit more, bring the chin in. Good girl, awesome. Go ahead and shift your weight and drop the left shoulder just a touch. Perfect, good girl. And nose towards me, nose towards me, nose towards me. Good girl, nose towards me, nose towards me. Good girl, and a little sweet smile. There we go, I want, <laughs> you're gonna have a little baby. How many months are you, B? <laughs> Long overdue, she said, awesome. Okay, now go ahead and turn towards me. And I just want your feet soft and then both hands underneath the belly. Perfect, just like that. Okay, now I just want you to lean forward towards me. Good girl and kind of bring your, your shoulders, your arms into your shoulders. Yeah, there we go, and it kind of, I want to close the gaps right here. Per not too much, not, I don't want it to feel unnatural. And go ahead and lock your hands a little bit together. Uh, perfect. Oh, I don't want the lock, I just want overlapping. So there we go, perfect. Good girl, I'm going to stick that belly out. <laughs> Good girl, and then go ahead and drop the chin. Perfect, beautiful, a little bit more. A little more, and then just glance your eyes down. Gorgeous, beautiful, I love it, awesome. Make sure my lighting patterns are correct. Okay, chin up just a touch. Now what I'm finding is I'm gonna move my light because the light is a little bit what I call a hatchet pattern on her face. What does that mean? That means that the light was really cutting her face in half. So now I've kind of angled the light a little bit more towards her, or wrapped around her. So we're gonna get that beautiful kind of butterfly flaw fall off on her. Gorgeous. Okay. And then one more time, chin just a little bit down and then just glance your eyes down. Good girl. Beautiful, I love it. See how I like that better? Oh yes, much better. Okay, I got wrinkles going on in my fabric. Porter's like hanging out back there. You gotta love the dog in the shot. <laughs> I'm doing like waist up so I can't see him in my shot, but he loves B. <laughs> Porter's a star back there. <laughs> awesome. Okay, good girl. Now I want a big smile, good teeth. There we go. You're going to have a beautiful little baby. I love it. Perfect. Okay, so basically I've taken a very simple setup with us, you know, a, you could even do this with one light. You don't have to do it with the two background lights if you don't want. But by putting the light on like a, on like a northern light angle, don't move. I love that kick of the hips. Keep going, kick it more, kick it more. Good girl, and now chin just down just a little bit. Perfect, I love it. Sometimes clients will do like natural things that are really fun and she just kind of angled her head up into the light and it looks so pretty and um, it has a little flirty, flirty aspect to it that I'm gonna run with it. So keep going. Pop the hips just a little bit more, perfect. Chin just a little bit, little head, there we go, perfect. Now chin down just a touch, perfect. I want you to flirt with me like I'm the daddy. I'm your big daddy. <laughs> You're like, Julia, stop. You're making me laugh. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is don't move, sweetie. You're doing great. I'm gonna blow a fan up into her face and this might cause a little bit of noise. So forgive if it's a little on the loud side, but let me go ahead. Oh, let's see, I don't have the right extension cord for this, do I? Oh, fiddly. Okay, I might have to go grab an extension cord, you guys. Uh, will this reach? It will, you think? 
maybe barely. Ugh, if we're lucky, look at that. Just. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this kind of flirty look, but I'm going to add in a fan to kind of blow her hair up in the air, and it's going to cause um, a lot of beautiful movement in the image. So we'll just turn it on soft at first. There we go. Gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. And then chin just down a little bit. Perfect. Good girl. I love it. Okay, now bring your hair forward. Yeah, good girl. Awesome. That's what I wanted. And you can have your client do this. And Bee's really good about it. She kind of knows what to do. But I love the hair flying. Little big sweet smile. Flirt with me. I'm the daddy. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, and then I want a fake laugh. Give me a good fake laugh, girl. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to have B turn to the side one more time so we can see this beautiful belly. And this time, I'll turn this off so we don't have the noise. And this time, I'm going to angle my lights a little bit differently to highlight the belly. So, with that being said, all I'm going to do is I have to be really careful with flare. I should have probably a soft box on here, but we're gonna try it like this. See what happens. I'm gonna turn this one off so we get an even background. And turn the power up on this to six so that we have a one and a half stop difference. And let's fire away and see what happens. I'm gonna take a quick test shot, honey. See where it's falling. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in just a touch closer. There we go. So all I'm wanting to do is I want this light back here to bounce in here and give me a beautiful highlight on her belly, to highlight the belly. So you'll notice that you can see the light. Now I have to be really careful because this, when it's coming at me like this from an umbrella, it's kind of an uncontrolled situation. What would be better is if I had a softbox on here with a grid and that would help aim the beam of light so that it's just highlighting your belly. So we're gonna get some spill and you'll see in the images that that's the case, but it'll still create a nice glow on her belly or what we call a kicker. So go ahead and put the weight on the right foot for me. Good girl. Pop the hip, cross the knee over. The left knee over, there we go. She's, I posed her so many times, she knows what to do. Um, and then what I want you to do is just take your, your left hand and just kind of slide it up your belly just a little bit, perfect. And then the right hand, um, let's go over top, perfect. And then shove the hips that way, perfect. Drop the right shoulder, good girl. And let's actually put both hands on top. You are prego. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. It like takes me back to <laughs> memories, right? <laughs> doesn't it? And I'm going to go ahead and blow the fan on her one more time. Probably feels good with that silicone belly on you. Perfect. And chin down for me. Good girl. And voila. We're getting that beautiful kiss of light on her belly. I'm going to go ahead and fluff her hair just a little bit to get it doing what I want it to do. There we go. And sometimes this really helps to have an assistant who can kind of fluff hair. Go ahead and what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you lift your hair and put it on top of your head. And then you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna let it go when I say, and then you're gonna immediately bring that right hand to the belly in the same position. Good girl. So nose towards me just a little bit, chin forward and down just a touch. Forward, good with the chin, not too much. Small movements, small movements. Chin down just a touch, a little bit more. And on the count of three, one, two, three. The fan's not quite strong enough. Let me get it a little stronger. Let it rip. You're like, yeah, that feels good, Julia. And go for it, honey. Perfect. I love it. Let me make sure I look at it and love it. We're going to do that one more time. And maybe um, do it with your left hand. Yeah, so that it really... Uh, yeah, I want it nice and loose like that. Perfect. 
and chin down just a touch, perfect, and go. Perfect, love it. Awesome, even just a soft, um, even just the soft motion of the fan like makes her hair, there we go, her, makes her hair kiss a little bit. Ah, that's what I wanted, beautiful girlfriend. Awesome, and we've lit that belly nicely. Go ahead and shove the hips just a little bit more, honey. Perfect, and then chin down, nose towards me. I gotta get my focus points a little bit better. Beautiful, I love it. Now go ahead and look down at baby girl, boy, you need a boy. It's time for a boy, girl. <laughs> She's like, I am not having any more, Julia. <laughs> Okay, I think that's good. What we're gonna now do is go ahead and drape some fabric on you to create more of a long lean line, and then later I'll composite that into a shot. Sound good? So now I'm gonna do a little bit more of a fun shoot with Belinda, and of course she's being a super good sport. So she has this Nikki Bicky like little dress on. It's, you can purchase them off Amazon. They're super cheap and they're just like a, a nylon material. As a matter of fact, this tank top I'm wearing is a Nikki Bicky. They're awesome girls out there if you like that kind of thing. But they also work great for maternity because they help slim the body and keep bra lines and panty lines from showing through things and stuff like that. So um, I've put, we have that on her and then I just put one of these shawls. I believe this is actually from Tao Pan. Um, it's just a maternity shawl and this looks really beautiful, highlighting the belly and giving some some fabric flow. And then this is just a background that I use for newborn babies on the bean bag. And I'm just gonna uh, fashion this around Belinda like a skirt. So I'm basically just creating like a sarong style skirt. And I, I don't know if I wanna clamp it. I think I actually might tie it just to give it a little bit more natural flow. Let's see how it looks on her hips. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do over here is literally just tie it in a knot like it's a beach throng. That's all. Okay. So I just literally tied a knot. And what I want is just some flow to the fabric. And you can see the, the line of this over here. So I've, I probably ought to loosen that a little bit so we don't have anything weird going on. But what I'm kind of trying to create is that, for lack of a better word, goddess feeling. Uh, Cause you know, moms who are giving birth freaking rock. <laughs> They're amazing, <laughs> and what they're doing truly is goddess-like. So I want to try to create that feeling as much as possible. So, and I can kind of see this through the fabric, which is bothering me just a little bit. But we can go ahead and, would you go ahead and just pull that, pull this up a little bit so it's hiding under the wrinkles of the sarong. And then, there we go, that's way better. Perfect, now I don't see it. Beautiful, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this. Don't mind me, I'm gonna be in your bubble. Like I have a bubble with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't really have a bubble with me, but that's okay. Most clients would though. Most clients would have bubbles. <laughs> there we go. Well, and the cool thing is, is that, you know, for composite work or artistic work later is you can elongate the frame, you can elongate the legs and um, make a pregnant mommy look really tall and elegant. And obviously you're not gonna wanna do that for clients, but if it's a, concept shoot then that looks gorgeous. So I'm gonna kind of pretend this is a concept shoot. There we go, good girl, that's what I love. Beautiful. And I'm gonna do a full body shot of Belinda and we're gonna blow the fan on her. Yeah, and I love the arms just down like that. It looks beautiful. So um, I'm kind of putting this north light look on her once again so that if I decide to put her into a scene it looks like open sky, or it looks like sunshine on her face. So, beautiful, now I just want you to kind of turn your nose towards the light and just close your eyes, and then I'm gonna have you do a couple things. I'm gonna have you look up into the light, I'm gonna have you look at me, I'm gonna have you look off in the distance kind of thing, and I'm gonna blow the fan on you as if there's a gentle summer breeze coming your way. There we go. Beautiful, gorgeous, and just kind of put your eyes down at baby. Beautiful, it's me, it's me, it's me. I'm the one not focusing right. Gorgeous, my dear. That is stunning. Beautiful, that's what I love to see. 
Okay, now I just want you to kind of put your right hand up over your belly. There we go. And now I want the left hand to just kind of grab the shawl and like put it behind, yeah, put it behind you. Like you're kind of tossing it away from you, if that makes sense. Perfect. Beautiful. Now take the, the left arm and just put it up on your hip like that. Gorgeous. I love it. Stunning. Let me look at it. Absolutely beautiful. I can't believe you seriously look pregnant. This is crazy. <laughs> okay, now I want you to just look up into the light. So put your chin up just a touch. Beautiful. Look up into the sky as if you're looking at beautiful things and dreaming away of baby. Okay, I'm going to play with your hair just a little bit more. This is not good for my secret. Your secret what? Your secret want? What's your secret want? <laughs> She's like, I kind of, you can always pretend to be pregnant now. <laughs> I was hoping it would talk you out of it. You got enough on your hands with the two you got. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, B, have another baby. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, you look so pretty right now. I love it. Awesome. I'm gonna make her look very grand by getting down here on the floor. Turn your nose towards me just a little bit, but keep looking up if you can. Good girl. I'm not getting the hair as much as I want to, but I'm gonna be okay with it. There we go, good girl, shake it out. Can you shake it forward? There we go. <laughs> Perfect, you're such a good model, I love it. <laughs> awesome, beautiful. Okay, and one more shot like this. Chin down just a tap, but look up at the sky. Perfect. Good girl. Awesome. I love that. That looks stunning. Okay. I think we've got it, girl. I'm very happy. <laughs> when you need a pregnancy model, you just get one of your friends pregnant, right? <laughs> no, she did a good job. So, and this is just another look. It's another way to make it look more spectacular. We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna shoot it in high key. Literally, all I'm gonna do is fire up my background lights to full power, and that'll make the background go completely white, which will give it a very ethereal look. So let's do that. Okay. Perfect, just face me like that, I love it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do a full high key scene with her with this shawl on. I'm gonna, I love the fan. I'm gonna go ahead and blow the fan on you one more time. It probably helps you not be so warm in that belly. Yep, and just kind of fold the hands, perfect. Good girl, chin down for me just a touch. I'm gonna go ahead and stand on a stool this time. Where is my stool? I'll be right back. Grab the stool. Oh, like to fake practice. <laughs> you know what would be hilarious? If you went to like Brown Allen and just started smacking down cocktails. <laughs> that would be hilarious, let me tell you. People would look at you so funny. Just to mess with people. Oh, I'm evil, aren't I? I'm an evil person. <laughs> okay. So. This time, chin down just a touch, sweetheart. Good girl. And fire, full high key, nice and beautiful white images. I love it, chin down just a touch. Look down at baby, big smile, bigger, cause you're awesome. And chin up just a touch for me, sweet girl, perfect. I love it. Now I'm gonna get down more on her level. Let the hair and the fabric. Well, and that's what's really nice about these flowy, um, flowy shawls and things is that it allows you to have this sense of movement in an image which I just love especially with a pregnant mommy perfect you don't have that quite at the right angle and go ahead and um, fix the fabric there I don't like the way it's on your shoulders I messed up when I was jumping. That's okay. 
<laughs> awesome. You are so cute. And I am using a 105 millimeter lens. Chin down for me, girl, just a little bit. Forward and down, beautiful. Um, I am using a 105 millimeter 1.4 lens. And um, I'm shooting at f8 at 200th of a second at ISO 100. Beautiful. Now turn your nose just this way. Chin down just a little bit. Pop the hip. Perfect. Good girl. And just a little forward and down. Perfect. Not too much. Not too much. Maybe a little bit up. I want to see what happens. And ch tilt the head this way. Perfect. Good girl. Awesome. Little sweet smile in there. Gorgeous. Beautiful. I love it. Gorgeous, and that's high key. Nice, white, light, fresh, airy look. And that's the way to, to do basically three simple poses with maternity. We shot on gray, we shot um, her to the side, we shot her forward facing, we shot full body, and then we changed to this outfit to create another full body look with the wind to create that sense of flow and movement. And then later in Photoshop, I'll go ahead and composite a little bit and see if I can't play around. Um, with her being elongated and put into a scene. And of course, that's another lesson for another time. So thank you, my dear. You're awesome. Of course. For strapping on a silicone <laughs> nine month belly. Again, if you're meeting us halfway during this broadcast, she is not <laughs> pregnant. I'm not. Belinda is not pregnant. So thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> uh. Finally, I just wanted to show you how I edit one of the images of Belinda, just to give you a brief lesson on you know, just a quick tutorial on how I would go through my editing process for maternity images. So these are the raw files, and I've already edited several from the session, um, but I wanted to just take you simply through one that appealed to me. So this is one that I did not edit, so let's go ahead and open it up. And I shoot in 16-bit, or 14-bit raw, excuse me, and I shoot in Adobe 1998 color space. I do that for a very good reason, uh, one of which is to avoid banding as much as possible. And I also make sure that when I work with the image in RAW, that when I open it up in Photoshop, it's going to stay in this 16-bit format rather than go into an 8-bit format once it enters Photoshop out of Adobe Camera RAW. So when to do that, basically just make sure that it goes in the same color space that you shot in and make sure it stays in 16-bit depth. So that'll give you maximum color gamut and it will give you maximum uh, bit depth for your image. So just as long as you set that up in advance, then voila, it'll stay that way. It'll stay from capture through processing in the same format, which is kind of the whole goal. So this image of Belinda as uh, not really pregnant, we still are laughing to this day that, that be, we may be pregnant, but hey. So I'm gonna just take you through my raw processing. As you can look at the histogram up here, it's a little bit underexposed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and brighten it up just a little bit to bring my highlights to the point where they're up over here on the higher end of the histogram. So I don't wanna clip them, so I don't want them to touch the end over here, but I definitely want things to uh, be brighter and just overall appeal for me is I like images that have a crisp, light, fresh feeling to them. Um, so with most images, when I do Adobe Raw adjustments, this is what I'm doing. I'm brightening things a little bit. I open up the shadows so you can see her hair just a touch more. The dark areas in her hair will come out. And then I deepen my blacks just a touch. And this is where you'll lose those, um, highlight those details in her hair once more. But to me, it just gives a, a better contrast look than um, just reducing the shadows or vice versa. Then I add a little bit of clarity just to kind of sharpen the, uh, or I should say, create contrast in the midtones. And voila, that's about it. I would probably open up the image from here. I don't do a ton of raw adjustments. As you can see, I didn't even touch my white balance. And the reason for that is because I'm shooting with a custom white balance with a gray card. I may have been shooting in flash, flash mode here, but in white balance, but flash mode does a pretty good job. The biggest thing that I don't want you to do is um, shoot your images in auto white balance. That's kind of the kiss of death because every single image will be in a slightly different color cast and then you're having to adjust everything. One other thing I'll do is I'll do enable lens profile corrections to kind of just make sure there's no distortion. Uh, one of the issues, or one of the good things I should say, is I shot with a 105 millimeter 1.4 portrait lens from Nikon. It's their brand new lens that's out. 
And when you're using a long lens like that, the, the amount of distortion from a wide angle just is pretty negligent. So you can see not a lot happened. The only other thing I might do is if the skin tone was really red, I might just drop the saturation in the reds a touch here. To You can see if I pump the reds up, there's a lot of red in her skin. If I, of course, kill the reds, then she looks a little zombie-like. Um, but that shows you at least where the reds are. And I'll just go ahead and drop those reds slightly just to cream, make her skin a little bit more creamy and perhaps add a little luminance to the reds so that brightens them up just a touch. So that's really it. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and open my image. Of course, it's opening in 16-bit in Adobe 1998 color space, which is exactly what I wanted. And then from here, it's just a matter of editing um, a pregnant mommy. Now, I do do liquify, and that's usually one of the first things I do in an image. And often I'll play around with my background and liquify as well, just to get things sorted out and straightened out. Um, I have no issue with liquefying moms. Some people do. Uh, I think that as a professional, our moms are coming to us for this ability, as long as we, of course, don't make them feel <laughs> or make them look like something they're not. I think that's the, the big thing is to not do that. Uh, but a little bit of liquify in key strategic areas is, is going to be hugely helpful in the sales room. So um, I would typically just go shift command X to open up, but I'll go ahead and go into the liquify filter here. Shortcuts are of course your best friend, but for so you guys can see what I'm doing, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it there. So liquify, the trick to it is to use the same size brush as the object you're trying to move. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck in her, her waistline just a little bit. So I'm going to use a nice big brush to do that. And then over here I'm going to make it slightly smaller to round her out. And then to make her arm come in just a touch right there. And then down here I'm going to, or at least up by her, sh by her arm, I'm going to go ahead and just bring that in a touch to make her look a little bit more elongated. And by her hip, I'm going to go ahead and bring things in, but don't be afraid to also to bring things out to make it look more rounded and curvier in a good way. You could see that on the edge of her, her hip here, there was a, a lumpy part, and bless Belinda for letting me pretty much liquefy the heck out of her on um, a free public access <laughs> uh, broadcast channel, bless her heart, but uh, she's gorgeous anyway. And, and what I'm doing is not really anything major. All I'm doing is just tucking in things that are slightly distracting. So I'm pretty happy with that in terms of her belly. The only other thing I'm going to do is slenderize her neck just a little bit to create a more lean long line. So again, just a bigger brush, slightly bring in the neckline to elongate the neck just slightly, and all of a sudden mama becomes tall, elegant, with that long, beautiful, graceful neck. You can even liquefy, if you want to, you have to be careful of that necklace, you can even liquefy the collarbones a little bit to elongate them um, and create a longer, leaner line. So that looks really nice, don't want to do it too much. And you can also liquefy hair. Now I don't do hair too much, but in this situation it might warrant it, especially right here, just to Calm that down slightly. You got to be really careful with hair because you can make it look terrible in a hurry. Um, but I will oftentimes just take a nice big brush and scoot things in just to create a better line and flow. Now this little piece right here I'm going to end up getting rid of in Photoshop just because it's kind of sticking out straight and looks more like an accident or a mistake than something we did on purpose. So that's really it for Liquify. I'm going to go ahead and um, stretch out my background as well. So I'm going to take the liquefy brush and just, you know, scoot things out. It may distort things slightly in terms of moving pixels around, but I can always kind of play with that and adjust that later in, uh, in Photoshop. So there we go. We'll go ahead and press OK. And voila, I took Belinda. We'll take, go ahead and do the before and then the after. I didn't do a ton. I just did enough to slenderize her down just a touch to make her belly stand out and be the main focal point. I didn't change her overall frame, um, and I think that's really important with these mommy images, but this is also what takes up the most time when you're working with, um, when you're working with a, a maternity session. So keep that in mind that you don't want to do too much because maternity sessions tend to overall be less profitable 
uh, than the baby. So, you know, you want to spend some time, of course, but it's really easy to, uh, where's my tool palette here? It's really easy to do too much with a maternity session, so just keep that in mind. All right, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the patch tool. Oh, that's my quick select tool. There we go. Uh, and I'm in content aware mode. I am going to just remove this little hair here and drag it out to a clean area and that'll help me get rid of it. So I'll go ahead and keep removing this little spot right there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take the spot healing brush tool, making sure it's in content aware mode, and just kind of eliminating that right there. Isn't that amazing? I love content aware tools in Photoshop. They truly are pretty miraculous. So that's not too bad. We'll go ahead and get rid of some other loose stray hairs that just are not attractive. And you know, a fan naturally does blow your hair into little frizzies like this, so you don't need to get rid of all of them, <laughs> but you definitely want to tone them down so that they're not like really ostentatious. Now, she's got a couple of flakes in her hair. I think this was dry shampoo that got put in, so we'll remove that. And then I'm just going to go through and start get, getting rid of little things that, blemishes and stuff like that, that need to be retouched out. She's got that cute little mole there. I've tempted with getting rid of it, uh, but I think I'll go ahead and leave it for now. And I use a tool called Portraiture in, as a final skin softening, skin smoothing agent, uh, or filter, I should say. So I do some of this, but not so much that it's going to take up hours of my time. You just kind of want to get the big spots and then let Portraiture handle the rest. So it's super important to be a little bit careful here and not take up too much time killing yourself over this stuff. You could easily spend hours retouching a mommy's skin. Okay, so that's about good. The last thing I'm going to do to her skin is uh, I'm going to tone down her dark circles. Now the way I do that is I duplicate the layer, so I press Command J or go up to Layer, Duplicate the Layer and that'll just create an exact copy of my background. From there, I'm going to go back to my patch tool. This time I'm going to put it in normal mode instead of content aware, and I'm just going to outline her dark circles and drag them to a clean piece of skin. So right now it looks terrible. You're like, whoa, Julia, what are you, what are you doing? But just bear with me. The reason I put it on a duplicate layer like that, and you can see it, it looks odd, especially on this side, the reason I put it on a duplicate layer like that was so I could back it off. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity of the layer to just soften up the circles a little bit. I don't want to get rid of them completely. I just want to soften them so she still looks like natural sweet Belinda that we all know and love, but she just doesn't quite look so tired. We all look tired, right? We all work our booties off. Um, I'm a pretty destructive editor, so from here I would smash my layers and go down to just basic mode again to one background layer and I will duplicate the layer one more time. And this time, I'm going to go and I'm going to pump up her eyes. Okay, so I'm going to take my dodge tool at 10%. And I'll just brighten the, the uh, catch lights in her eyes. And then what I'll also do is just create a little bit of a counter catch light. So I'm just painting in there. And if I go too much, again, I can always back it off. So I go into the eyes, brighten them just a little bit, and if it's too much, just back it down slightly. I want her eyes to glisten and glow, but I don't want them to look like crazy psychedelic zombie girl, okay? Again, smash my layers one more time. You can either do that by pressing Shift Command E or by right clicking here and then just flatten the image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, press Command J this time to duplicate my layer. And this time I'm just going to dodge her lips a little bit. Oh, looks like we need to, before I do that, we're going to Take the little dry skin off her lips. There we go. Now I'm going to press Command J, get my dodge tool, and just brush in a quick little highlight on those lips of hers. Now that's a little too bright, so I'm going to go ahead and back it off. There we go. I kind of like that. That looks pretty. She's got a sweet little soft 
catch light to her lips. And from here, I smash my layers. And really, um, at this point, all it is is just fixing the dress. So she has a bra line here that really bothered me. So again, I'm going to press Command J to duplicate my background layer. I'm going to select my patch tool. Uh, let's try content aware. Sometimes I have to play around with either content aware or normal just to see how it feels. But I'm going to go ahead and highlight this or select this highlight and shadow. And then just, yeah, content aware looks like it works pretty well. And I'm going to try to just kind of soften it a little bit. And it actually looks pretty good without pulling it back. I don't want to go crazy with this because you can. Yeah, see, it's definitely not doing what I want. Let's try normal mode. And off, there we go. Oftentimes in Photoshop, it's, it's trial and error. It's just playing around with what works and what doesn't. So there we go. That kind of eliminated, or at least helped. And it doesn't need to be annihilated, but perhaps just toned down a little bit. So I'll, again, back off the layer, and voila. Now. Um, bless Belinda's heart. I hope she doesn't get mad at me, but her boobs are a little bit sagging right now, so we're going to go ahead and, and fix her up. That's what happens when you put on a strapless bra that you wore years ago and doesn't fit you anymore. Um, so I'm just going to take Liquify, and I'm going to um, just make things not be quite so odd looking. We all like our boobs to look good, right? It's all about the, the breast line. <laughs> So there we go, just by doing that right there, and you can see I've got kind of a big uh, shadow line going on here because her bra was, as she tilted into the pose, this shadow became a little more prominent because she was leaning into it, so it gave this tuck of fabric here. But already you can see the breast line improving and just looking a little bit more natural and not, and not as distracting. So I'll go ahead and leave that there. So if I wanted to, I probably wouldn't annihilate this and get rid of it completely, but I will tone it down. So again, Command J to duplicate the background layer. We're going to take the patch tool, and this is going to look really funny at first, but I'm going to pull it back. So I basically just annihilated it, blending in my, oh, too much, blending in my seams here. And you can see that looks kind of funky. You're like, what, what's going on there? So I'm simply going to pull it back a little bit. And that helps a lot. So now all of a sudden, it's not necessarily this glaring shadow. It's just a soft shadow. I might even pull it back just a little bit more so that it's natural, but not, but not out of control distraction. Okay. So I'm going to smash my layers. And now, for me, all it really is is a matter of putting on portraiture. So I go up to Filter, Imagonic. Imagonic, I can never pronounce that. <laughs> it's a company and they make portraiture, which is absolutely incredible. So I select portraiture and of course it opens in a filter. Now I have my output happening on a new layer. So the reason I didn't duplicate my background layer first and then open portraiture is because portraiture on output will put the effect or the filter onto a new layer as I have it commanded to do so here. So just check that if you want to do that. And then this is super simple. I have it in just default. I don't do a ton of fancy stuff in portraiture. I simply hit my, um, my plus selection skin color picker, and I just highlight a couple areas on her skin. And you can see over here on the right, it's showing me what it's going to apply portraiture on. So, because you can see the skin tone color that it's working with is all within the confounds of this box here. So I'll go ahead and press OK. And you can see Portraiture immediately put a new background layer or copy of the layer on uh, top of my old or my original background layer. And so from here, I'll zoom in and you can see, whoa, Portraiture kind of annihilated her. It really did a lot. But the nice thing is, is that now that I have it on this background layer or this extra layer, duplicated background layer, I can then pull it back. So I'll pull it back to about 50, 55%, smooth the skin, but I don't want to make those pores disappear and have her be something that she's not. So I'll go ahead and smash this, and from here, it's really just a matter of cropping. So I like just a little bit of headroom, and I want her on a third. So if I do a tic-tac-toe box, I want her to be on a PowerPoint. And then from here, I'm simply going to brighten, I just an overall mid-tone adjustment, because I love a bright, fresh, clean look. And there you go. That is a finished image of Belinda. I'll go ahead and save this as a PSD. Um, and that's a finished image of Belinda. If she was a client, I would have no problem showing this to her as a client. 
and printing it huge on her wall should she want to. More than likely, she would go ahead and order an album because most of my maternity clients do go in the album direction. But clean, simple, lovely, and fresh, but easy at the same time, and not a lot of editing. So here's the before, what we started with, and here's the after. And that's basically a simple, clean edit that we would do every day here in studio. Rolling. Blooper, Rolling. <laughs> Rolling. Rolling. Yeah. Rolling. <laughs> it's basically a big silicone belly with some towels under it. Jiggle, jiggle. Does it feel pregnant? It does, yeah. Yeah, it's not comfortable. Except though. that's not, yeah. This I mean, not that pregnancy is comfortable. <laughs> the right. strap is not comfortable. Yeah, there's like this big Velcro strap at the back. They're not cheap, though. What about, I think I paid, what, 200 bucks for this thing? And then it's got this big old Velcro strap at the back that basically keeps it on. But I think it has a strap that like goes around your neck too, so you could really like a woman could really fake being pregnant. Really? Which is actually really cruel if you think about it. Yeah, it is cruel. That is cruel. I can't even imagine. We I mean, could totally mess with people's heads by going. It would to be a bar good for a model having... call. Oh yeah. For mo oh yeah, for people to practice for model calls that would be a good idea. Oh yeah, very cool. That's what. That's why I wanted to show it is because I think. You can do, you know, you don't have to, and the nice thing is about using a friend is that you don't necessarily need to like produce model images for them. Right. Like, obviously. I don't need any of this. <laughs> She's got all these pictures of me being pregnant. <laughs> What's in there? Is it kicking? Is it kicking? Hello, baby. Hello. <laughs> Let's go get you a cocktail. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you imagine? What's her the bell? I'm not that, okay, I'm brave to do this, but I'm not that brave to go out in public. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this is? What do you think this is? Yeah, but it's different. It is different. It's photographers. <laughs> I can't see their eyeballs staring at me. <laughs> Can you imagine being in a bar with that thing and just sloshing over the right? eyeballs? <laughs> you would have to be in with the bartender. They wouldn't serve you. <laughs> <laughs> Justin would serve me. <laughs> Justin would serve me. We should go in the crowd and make it. Only make them out. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you guys understand my ridiculously sarcastic sense of humor. So I appreciate you uh, putting up with us being silly here and there. And no, we would never take her out to a bar. That would just be wrong on so many levels. But we love to joke about it. So, and again, thank you for uh, putting up with some of our uh, video issues. We can see that <laughs> images looked a little washed out and... Um, just we are learning this live broadcasting thing right along with you guys so just trying to get some good free content to you guys and um, of course build this little community of a Facebook group into something um, special so thank you again so the basic take-home message I think is just to shoot really well in camera as best you can and then consistent processing that will make your processing that much more simple you can see you no know, granted I took a long time to edit the image to teach you guys but most of all, that kind of image doesn't take longer than two to three minutes to do from start to finish. Now, with maternity images, sometimes it can take a little longer per image just because you're using liquify and doing things like that. But if you're getting it right in camera to begin with, then your editing process shouldn't be that long. It should be quick and easy so you can get through a session um, efficiently not spending a lot of time on your computer and instead fixing all those things and making it right in camera first. So I want to, let's see, let's uh, continue on with our uh, broadcast here. I want to talk to you a little bit about the maternity retreat. Uh, and that's the reason we did today's broadcast was all about maternity. The maternity retreat is brought to you by the Milky Way. There are, I think, 19 or 20 different instructors on the online maternity re retreat, which opens May 16th to 18th, 2017. And uh, tickets go on sale Thursday, this coming Thursday at 8 a.m. It's going to be, I believe, $247 to hear all this content from some amazing maternity instructors from around the world. And if you would like to uh, purchase, of course, we're giving away some amazing freebies that go along with the class, over $350 worth of content for you to work with in your own studio, one of which is the Bridge to Booking course. It's our mini course. Once you bring in those mommies and they start being attracted to your studio, then it's time to actually book them. And this is a $200 value, so we're giving that away as a complimentary gift as well. <laughs> you just had to, didn't you? They brought the belly. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll show it to you in a minute, full screen. I'll, I'll show it, I'll give, bring it full screen. <laughs> a little distraction right there, yep. Nine months in the making right there. <laughs> Trust me, it kicks me in my dreams. Um, the new mommy survival kit is also something that we're giving away. This is an incredible marketing tool, and Belinda DeBoard, bless her heart, has created this. It's a kit that you can give in any of your marketing campaigns for new moms that helps moms survive the last month of pregnancy and helps them figure out what to shoot at the hospital of their baby. It's just an incredible marketing tool that you can give away not only in your partnerships with vendors, but at your studio, online, as a digital download freebie with a content marketing strategy that you have. So that's gonna be a free gift, a template for you to use and customize for your own studio. And then along with the course comes the Maternity Marketing Action Steps Workbook. And uh, that's of course has to do with the content in the class as I'll be teaching the five marketing methods to maximize your maternity bookings at the maternity retreat. So to sign up, you can go to jewel-education.com forward slash maternity retreat. You'll be able to see the full lineup of instructors who will be teaching at the maternity retreat as well as get on the VIP list. Uh, and again, if you book or register through our links, you'll go ahead and get the uh, freebies as well. So we're super excited about that. Um, so stay tuned. Of course, we'll be in contact with you throughout the rest of the week to talk more about the maternity retreat as registration uh, gets closer. So again, that happens on Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time is when registration opens for the maternity retreat. Such an incredible value for $247 to hear from so many instructors worldwide who are just the top notch in talent when it comes to maternity and newborn photography. So today's freebie, we're giving away our entire equipment list that we used in this episode along with the lighting diagrams. So you you can do these setups on your own. Uh, so go ahead and go to jewel-tv.com to opt in and get that freebie. And of course now it is Q&A time. Everybody wants to know about the belly. <laughs> do they seriously ask questions about the belly? Is it all about the belly? It's, it's all about the belly. It is all about the belly. <laughs> she was gonna dance behind me with it on. <laughs> Oh, I love it. You should totally do it. Anyway, okay, Rita asks, any suggestions on getting the background evenly lit in a small studio space. Uh, yeah, I think one of the big things for that, Rita, is to just really make sure that your lights are evenly spaced away from the background. And I know it can be tight. My sister works in like 900 square feet with really tight walls. The key is to get the, the lights that are on the background, the background lights, a decent distance away so that they evenly light, so you have no hot spots on the background. Remember the uh, fall off rule. Light falls off very fast when it's close to the subject. As you move further away from the light, the fall off becomes less great. So if, you're in, if your lights are further away from the background, you're gonna get a more evenly lit background that's smooth and, and has a, doesn't have a strong gradient on it so you won't end up with that, that banding, which we all hate so much. Okay, Jillian Faulkner asks, would love to see what would happen with the background if it's not lit. Is it possible to do the shoot with one main light if it's a large octobox? You betcha, Jillian, it is totally possible to do this. If I didn't light my white background, it would fall off into a darker gray tone. And honestly, I have a couple gray backgrounds in my studio, but I never use them. I just shoot on white and I don't light it. The further you pull your subject off the background, the darker that white background will become. You can literally make it go black. Um, and of course, as you get closer and the main light begins to, to have some uh, feathering effect on the background, you'll see it gray up a little bit. But just be super, super careful because if that light gradient on your background, if your background is not evenly lit and there's spill from the main light, uh, that will cause a gradient which could get you some banding. So just be careful about that. Okay, Jen says, Jen uh, Gotchall says, I'm not understanding why this is north light. Could someone explain what that means? Basically what I'm talking about is when I have an octobake really high up and pointing down at a subject, it gives the feeling of a north light open sky. And maybe I should have clarified that a little bit more when I was talking about it, when I was shooting Belinda in the, the long skirt and the, the beautiful shawl that we got from Taupan. 
Um, that, the whole point of that, and the reason I shoot like that a lot is because if I ever want to extract a subject off a background and put them into an outdoor scene, having a big kind of open sky feeling over them, that north light feeling, makes it more believable when you inject them into another scene in Photoshop. So yeah, another class for another day, happy to do it. If you guys want to see a maternity compositing class, be happy to throw one of those together. Uh, but that's why I would shoot with the Octobank up high like that to simulate north light. I hope that makes sense, makes sense, Jen. I probably should have explained it a little bit more in, in the course. Jenna says, in what screen did you set the bit depth for opening new images? Um, good question, Jenna. Let me see if I can, uh, do we have Photoshop on this computer? I'm not sure we do. Um, basically, what I did, do we have Photoshop on this computer? I think I'd have to log out because I'm. it's only on my two other licenses. Um, basically, when you open up Camera Raw, okay, so I shoot in Raw. So when you open up camera raw and image, at the bottom of the image, you'll see a, a, like a, it almost looks like a hyperlink. There's a blue word at the bottom. It'll say what color space you're in, what dip, bit depth you're in. Just click on that as if it's a hyperlink and you can set up you know, where, how you want the image to open it from camera raw into Photoshop, either as, you know, what color space you want, what dip, bit depth you want, et cetera, et cetera. So I did it in the, on the screen shot, um, the screen tutorial that I did when I edited Belinda's image. So when you have a chance, go back and look at the archives again, and you'll see exactly how I opened up that window and you'll be able to follow along and, and do it exactly. Okay. One more question on a post-it. Gotta love it. Adele, how many images, Adele asks, how many images should I include in a typical maternity session? Good question, Adele. Uh, mine, it's, it varies. Sometimes I, uh, it depends on if it's a full session or a mini session. How I do maternity is, you know, maternity sales are never huge sales for me and I don't expect them to be. And I think the reason for that is most moms don't really want a huge screaming 40 inch portrait of themselves pregnant with their belly showing on a wall somewhere in their house. Most moms want a keepsake or a memory. They want, um, they want uh, like an album or a book, but they don't, they want a reminder, but they don't necessarily want a huge artistic portrait. Now some do, but it's rare. So I go into a maternity session with the concept of doing it as a mini maternity session. So when I book newborns and maternities as a combo, I book a mini maternity session and a full platinum newborn session. And then so my, my maternity sessions are pretty much the same I did with Belinda. I show about 15 to 20 images, maybe three different looks total. And that is really it. And that produces 15 to 20. And that's how many images I show for a mini maternity session. My clients seem very happy with it. I'll probably pop up to 20 or 25 if I know they want to do a book or an album. But I don't do a ton for maternity because I'd rather focus that energy towards the newborn. And if I know the client is not going to be spending a lot or doesn't have a high budget for the maternity, um, I want them to put that towards the newborn because that's where those really special images are going to be. Okay, so I think that's about it in terms of, of questions we've got. For those of you who are uh, watching this via YouTube after the fact, if you would like to see the archives you or watch live with us, you can go to the Facebook group, which most of you watching now are seeing us here in the Facebook group. But go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Julia Kelleher and request to join. Please just make for sure you have something in your profile that indicates you are a professional photographer, as this group is solely for those who are professionals and aspiring professionals who you know, want to make a living and a business out of what they do. And of course, if you want to reach me, you can find me at Jewel Images. That's our business page on Facebook plus Jewel Images Bend on Google+, Plus, Jewel Images on Pinterest, as well as on Twitter, Instagram, and um, on Periscope. So guys, I am so excited that you joined us today. I'm gonna show this belly one more time because that seems to be the talk of the town. Isn't this thing awesome? I got it on Amazon. Yeah, I think I did pay a pretty penny for it because I wanted one that was high quality. The belly. <laughs> it literally does make you prego. <laughs> Look at that. I should put it under my shirt. Let's put it under it, see what it looks like. <laughs> Just goes to show I will do anything for television, right? Look at that. I'm prego. My microphone falls off. Anyway, I found it on Amazon. I did pay like, I think, what did we pay? Close to 200 for it. You can find them a lot cheaper, but it's basically a silicone. I mean, this is kind of embarrassing for all the boys watching out there, but you know, girls, um, my light is getting more and more bright in here, but that's okay. Um, you know how like 
those of us who are small chested use these things in our bras when we're going out at night, you know, like to make things just look a little bit better. That is literally what it is. It is a silicone belly. I'm going to go ahead and try to get my camera to keep it like, let's show the settings panel and see if I can like reduce the exposure. There we go. That's a little bit better. Oh my goodness. There we go. I think it'll auto adjust. There we go. So that's not quite so bright. Okay. So yeah, isn't this crazy? Big old straps. And then it comes with, it has these little tabs on the top. So there's literally like suspenders <laughs> that come with it. So you can strap it to you. Um, but yeah, it's a, honestly, it's a great way to practice maternity. You get a friend to wear it and shoot some images and make your, make your, uh, make your maturity sessions better by simply practicing. So that's a, a good way to practice. All right. Any other, I think we're good. Any other questions? A, a little bit of a long episode today, but that's all right. Hopefully you got something out of it. I appreciate you watching. And of course you can always see the archives at jewel-tv.com. Ask your questions here in the group. Both Beth and Belinda and I uh, will be in there answering questions as much as we can this week on this episode. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time.